All right. Hello and welcome to our live stream of Eat Sleep Code. How are you doing, John? I'm well. I'm well. Thanks. Doing well. I'm uh, enjoying my floating head here. <laughs> your, your floating head inside the box. Wasn't sure how to set that up. I'm in a box. Why shouldn't you be in a box, John? That's right. And my, my quarantine cut allows me to uh, chroma key perfectly here. You just need some green headphones. That's right. I'll be floating. All right. So this is another exciting episode of Eat Sleep Code. So maybe we should do the quick happy introduction here. We're, a little, we're like 30 minutes past our normal time slot because technical difficulties with OBS, the streaming equipment. By the way, let us know if uh, you can hear us okay in the stream. Um, we are watching those comments and feel free to ask questions live. Uh, John, can you give me a quick mic check? Or let's see yeah, doing I... a mic check here, just seeing if my head is stuck. All right, cool. I got you. Uh... Floating, but not, not moving. <laughs> uh, did the video get stuck on you, man? It might, might have. Well, OBS has, yeah, OBS hasn't been cooperating at all today. So it looks like your video's frozen because why mm. not? This is the uh, this is the whole Dune traveling without moving motif. There you go. Hi. Yeah, there we go. There's a there's a John in motion. Let me try uh, resetting the. Um, uh, here, I'll just stick you over here for a minute. There you go. There's two of you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it live. We'll do it live, folks. Um, I, I got to point the right way. Am I doing this the right way? Hang on. No, I got to go this way. Hey. What's the deal with this guy? Uh, I'm trying to restart that NDI source and it's, uh, it's not coming up. So you know what? I'm going to leave the Skype cam up and I'm going to close wow. the NDI source because it's being a total pain. All right. And it's not, it's not that useful anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> this works just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't ignore the man behind the curtain. Yeah, really? Uh, let's see if I can get the braces off of here or the box. We don't need two boxes. One box is good enough. There we go. That'll do it. That's good enough for today. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, hello and welcome to Eat Sleep Code, the official Telerik podcast. I'm your host, Ed Sharmino. With me is John Bristow. Hi, everyone. Uh, Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all safe. John, we got some good chat already in the chat room. Uh, <laughs> it's Monday. You guys need this kind of entertainment. Uh, <laughs> TJ says everything sounds good, but the frozen video. So uh, you know, it's it's kind of like um, it's kind of like uh, what's it? Futurama. Like I've got your your head in a fishbowl on the other side of the screen now. So it's all good. That's all right. It's uh, very apropos, as they rightly point out in the chat, that uh, Rick and Morty. Our uh, one of our our featured stories here, and we get the two. Uh, I'd like to think of us as more of the Statler and Waldorf, those two old guys in the balcony of the Muppet Show. <laughs> yeah, but you'll you'll always be the Morty to my Rick. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So speaking of Rick and Morty, we'll, we'll get to our news here. Uh, this is what we do uh, every Monday: is uh, go over the latest and greatest news feed items that we can find and just give our hapless opinions on those things. Uh, so th this is my contribution to the awesome. conversation this week. Um, I've been finding these great uh, Skype. Um, kill this, by the way. Get that off there. Um, we, I've been pulling these great backgrounds for um, Skype and uh, Teams. Because, or Zoom, I mean, Zoom and Teams, because you need good backgrounds. Yes. Uh, so you don't have to show your dirty office behind you. Uh, so this week it's Rick and Morty. Last week was what? Street Fighter? We've had Street yep. Fighter and the uh, Everything is Fine background. Now we've got Rick and Morty backgrounds. So uh, we've got some, you know, we got Morty's bedroom and uh, Rick's garage and, of course, the Smith's wow. living room. Uh, wow. there, there's, uh, there's Rick's garage right there. That's a good one. I like that one. You should use that, John. 
Yeah, no. How about no? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. It's only the uh, greatest cartoon ever. Uh, so we've got the Rick and Morty virtual backgrounds. Um, those are awesome. So uh, like Scott Addy said, he came here for the Rick and Morty content and happened to stumble on <laughs> the two of us. So uh, That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, switch those out with your Street Fighter backgrounds from last week and you'll be the most popular guy in uh, in your team's chat. Well, that's debatable. <laughs> Might be the most most annoying. We'll see. Uh, it's it's a great show. Um, I don't know if it's family friendly enough for us to talk about in detail, but it's a great show. Oh, I um, think it's fine. I, I know I've enjoyed it for the last four seasons, and it's it's back this week in the U.S. Mm. And mm. Um, also in I don't know if you've got this in Australia yet, John. You have to tell me um, on Hulu if you have the Solar Opposites show. Have you seen that yet? Uh, well, I'll stop you right there. When you start with Hulu, uh, you have to start talking about uh, setting up a VPN. So oh, no. we don't have that in Australia, unfortunately. Well, that's a shame. Yeah. I don't I don't know what it would come on if you do not have Hulu. Uh, but Solar Opposites is a show by Dan Harmon, uh, one of the better halves of Rick and Morty. So oh, there you go. It is pretty much like a spinoff of Rick and Morty. I mean, it's the same art animation. Um, I thought the humor was going to be a little more family friendly than Rick and Morty. Right. And it turns out it went in a full turn, different direction. Uh, it, you know, the pendulum swung on the more adult side of the humor <laughs> spectrum. So if, uh, if you're easily offended, do not tune into solar opposites. Um, is for the faint of heart, not for the faint of heart. Yeah, uh, even if you are offended, why not tune in? Just get a get a sense <laughs> what it's anyway. like. Anyway, these these yeah. comments are not being made on behalf of Prodigy no, no, Telerik no, no, no. or these these, these <laughs> are uh, these are personal. Yeah, these are personal. <laughs> yeah, these are personal opinions that uh, do not reflect any anything that has a TM at the end of the name. Yeah, dude, you start with Rick and Morty. <laughs> I think I think that's a disclaimer that is implied, uh, you know. These are personal opinions. So true. Uh but Zoom and Skype, uh all of those things need backgrounds, so uh mm. make sure you jump on and grab your backgrounds for the week. Uh so I'll keep my eye out for more of these. I like the th the running theme of having backgrounds as part of the show. So yep. um we'll we'll keep an eye on these. Uh but this is one of my favorites. Uh, so I need to go download these myself. Love it. It's getting into something a little more technical. Mm -hmm. Maybe too technical. Because um, I'm not sure I quite grasp the gravity of the situation. <laughs> uh, C Sharp uh, introduced source code generator. Scott Addy's right. in the chat room. So Scott, yeah. got, he's definitely a pro on the, the subject in detail. I'm sure he, he wrote this himself. He can tell us all <laughs> about it. Um so, John, my take is something happens to source code, hence the name nice. source code generator. Some some source gets generated on behalf yeah. of the generator. So um, basically, this is uh, an evolution of the compilation steps that occur when compiling your C-sharp code. And uh, basically, the idea here is that typically when you go from when you when you hit um, build or uh, you're doing on a command like CSC build whatever um, it will take your uh, your programming language which is C sharp in this case and then generate MSIL and binaries as a result and what this does is it basically provides a go between so and I'm not sure if you're showing the page for the yeah there it is that diagram so basically what this allows you to do is um, uh, basically, based on the source code itself, like this is sort of like a, a code DOM sort of inspection if you want. Uh, you can think of it sort of like that, but basically you can generate code and inject that code uh, into your uh, compilation step. And this has some nice implications uh, for people who want to do, um, I guess I guess the easiest way to understand this is sort of like code weaving. Um, you know, when you have, uh, this, is my, this is my stupidity, uh, flaring right now, by the way. So um, code weaving is this nice aspect, this sort of nice oriented, uh, aspect oriented model where 
you decorate your code with attributes and then that injects uh, functionality into the class, the method, the whatever it is you're talking about. So if you wanted to say, for example, the, the, the most trivial example they talk about is locking. So let's say I put an attribute on a, on a method saying when you come into the call and when you leave the call, I want you to log that. Um, you can put an attribute on that method and it will inject that behavior and aspect into the behavior of the code it's running. This is sort of akin to, uh, as from my cursory reading of this, this is sort of providing a, sim a sort of a simpler mechanism of injecting source code like that. And so it might have an implication on people who are writing aspects, um, but it will also have other implications on people who uh, want to inject their own implementations. Um, another example that comes to mind is where you want to take up, um, you're in the compilation step, you want to just pick up a piece of code and then drop it into a location where um, the code itself is being uh, done. And this can, this can get you around some um, elements of uh, reflection, um, you know, and trying to change the implementation on the fly. I, I, I didn't read this in the article, but I suspect that there might be some, there could be some implications around plugins. Like if you're providing a plugin capability, I'm not sure. Um, but those are some of the very cursory, I, I, I took like two seconds reading this article and this was the gist of what I got from this. Um, and, uh, you know, for folks who of are my age, maybe not your age, um, Ed, but, uh, you know, we akin this to something like macros that you see in C um the c programming language so um you know so things like that um again that's again a very cursory high level ignorant uh view of that this may be also what they're using in uh the blazer um framework for dotnet 5 uh there is going to be uh more capabilities around aot um and also a possibility that some of these things may get compiled out to C Sharp, and then we also might hijack that compilation process and mm. output some things as WebAssembly versus compiling to um, the, uh, what do you call it, um, the missile code, uh, yep. intermediate .NET code. <laughs> do not touch code. Do yeah. not touch code. So the so, one... So I, the, I'll share one personal anecdote here, which is, um, so where this will help, and they 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 actually mark this out in the article. It's called source source generated and ahead of time compilation. So um, they they rightly point out uh, that many frameworks and libraries make heavy use of reflection or a f reflection slash emit code. So examples that are listed here are system.text.json, system.text.regularexpressions. Um, another one that comes to mind is back in the early days of .NET, I remember we were trying to figure out, we were doing some stuff with XML serialization, and we were trying to figure out how the hell does it know that, how does it do this stuff? And we discovered later on that it actually does code generation and mm -hmm. reflection on types to generate the XML, not only for the schema, for, but for the instances themselves. I would imagine, or I suspect, that with this code, the source generator, that might become a little bit simpler. But again, um, that's just thinking on the spot here. Yeah, um, it's definitely interesting. They've got a lot of good examples in the article. Uh, I just shared that in the chat room as well. And if you scroll through this thing, I mean, there, there's plenty of reading here. Um, it's uh, quite a lengthy blog post, actually. Uh, so it's worth checking out and uh, seeing what kind of cool stuff you can pull off with the okay. new feature that's in .NET Core or the .NET framework. Good stuff. Um <laughs> Let's see, what's this? Was this this is one I added. Okay, cool. Yeah. Draw so, uh, IO. Tell yeah. us a little bit about so, that. Yeah, so Draw IO is a great little utility. It's a website you can go to that allows you to draw all sorts of things like flow diagrams, um, little sequence diagrams if you want, things like that. And now what this uh, extension allows you to do is to incorporate those directly into VS code. Um, so you can actually... Uh, use VS Code, your standard of choice, uh, should be your editor of choice. Uh, it's sort of like, it's the, the common joke I always make, which is go to check out our website, make it your homepage. If it's not a homepage, make it a bookmark. It's the same thing with VS Code. If it's not your editor today, it will be your editor someday. Um, so this is uh, basically an add-in. And uh, how good is VS Code? I mean, come on. Um, and so this allows you to do these diagrams within VS Code. It will emit, uh, obviously, the... Um, 
XML um, as you're doing so, uh, obviously the SVG, and then, uh, yeah, allows you to draw these really cool diagrams in, in line. So you said this exports to an SVG format, so you can... Uh, I believe there's a... a number of formats, actually, that oh, you can okay. export. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you save directly to PNG files. Mm -hmm. This would be helpful for documentation, that type of stuff. Um, yeah, I think out of the box, they, they have a, a proprietary sort of markup that they use. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've used draw.io, but um, yeah, there's a number of export capabilities. I don't know if those export capabilities are built into VS, the VS Code extension. They may not be, but um, certainly you can do this within the extension itself. And then if you need to go to draw.io and then uh, re-import there. Nice. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. like yeah. Pie hole five O's yes. here. Yes. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, one of my favorite things here. So this is a Raspberry Pi, and uh, what this allows you to do is, you know, basically do a lot of really cool computing on the fly uh, with a small little device. Uh, it's got some great capabilities to it. Uh, HDMI, okay. yeah, yeah, HDMI. Uh, it's got uh, really good capabilities in terms of the the, uh, the CPU, um, and uh, yeah, it's a great little utility device that you can plug in anywhere. Anyways, um, so Pi Hole is basically a little program that you can run on one of these guys at, that will basically uh, route any tracking or ads um, requests to basically um, a black hole. And uh, this will run this operating system um, on top of this device. And you can put it in it basically at the front of your network stack uh, at your home. And then it will basically uh, take all that, uh, all those routes, or sorry, all those requests, and then basically uh, make them invalid, so you're not getting tracked or you're not getting ads. And the it's, uh, the one that it's a happy the one man that, in the middle. Yeah, that's right. So the the one thing that this does is uh, it it gets rid of all those YouTube ads that you see commonly at the start mm -hmm. of every video. So that's the one that most people identify with, but it gets rid of all kinds of other things. And you can set it up to block um, uh, inappropriate content for your kids uh, that you can put in hours. It's sort of like a very smart type of router for specifically oriented towards tracking and ads. Yeah, if you have uh, uh, kids at home, this is really good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a little bit more advanced than the built-in uh, router yeah, um, yeah. This is definitely that you this normally is, have. This is, this is definitely the Konami code of uh, <laughs> setting up a network uh, easily. You just slap this into one of these guys, uh, put it this, put it at the front of your network, and then have everything route through it. Um, getting it set up is is not too hard. Getting one of these devices kind of um, you know uh, built uh, can be a bit tricky for some folks, and that's fine. Um, but they're very easy to purchase. You can get starter kits online for very. They're very uh, sorry. They're very affordable, um, and then you install one of these things on it if you want. Um, there's a variety of uses for Raspberry Pis, obviously. You could probably buy them already set up with Pi Hole on them oh, if sure. you look sure. if you look on the interwebs in the right places. Uh, it's probably probably not too hard to find. Whether it's like eBay or Amazon, even might have them. I haven't checked, but I can imagine they're pretty prevalent. Um, yeah, I've seen all sorts of stuff with Raspberry Pi things built pre-built into them like Nintendo emulators and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, the pies are really flexible. I mean, you can find them doing about pretty much anything these days. That is uh, true. That is true. And, uh, SD border obviously rightly points out that they're great for blocking content for young children, but, uh, older kids are getting smarter and that is definitely true. Uh, older kids are knowing to, you know, pair their, uh, their cell phones with uh, with their computer looking for content. Uh, you know, it, it, there's only so much you can do. So, yeah, uh, you know, all this stuff goes along with good parenting. I think uh, <laughs> you know you gotta you gotta like, kind of pay attention yeah. to what they're doing. You can't just like throw pie hole on the on the network yeah. and uh, my, my take your hands done. off the wheel. Like, yep, yeah, I'm right. done for today. I am parent yeah, just, of the year. <laughs> That's right. Just like uh, vitamins alone won't save you, you got to tell your kids to look both ways before crossing the street, street and also other things as well. So, uh, but uh, another tool for the arsenal of trying to keep, uh, well, kids are, I didn't really look at it this from keeping kids safe because, yeah. you know, I think uh, generally you should tell your kids, look, just be careful about what you look at. Don't, don't, you know, go here, that sort of thing. Um, 
but I think this will help with uh, speeding up your connections. So because if you think about it just from, this is the technical side of it, every every HTTP request you make, um, you know, there's establishing a connection, there's making the request, going the latency involved of going to the, the ad server. And it's doing that, I don't know if you've ever run a browser like Brave or something where it blocks all those things implicitly uh, or explicitly rather, um, you can see the number of requests it makes uh, per connection. I mean, sometimes I've been to sites and there's like there's like 20, 30, 40 requests all blocked by by Brave. And it's not just on the initial request. There's requests that go out throughout the, the web session. So you're on a site, for example, like, I don't know, at CNN.com or whatever. And then you decide, yeah, Fiddler's a great tool for, for watching this stuff. But you can see a little icon in the top of Brave where it's basically showing you all these these requests that are being blocked basically. So what this does is it basically puts it on your entire network rather than having to rely upon individual instances of browsers. Yeah, Fiddler is a good good program if you wanna see all that traffic coming through. Uh, without, oh, it's the program, come on. Yeah, if, you, you know, if you're interested in seeing like the, the million different things that Google's sniffing for or whatever website you're on is looking at, um, like you said, there's dozens and dozens of requests that come up, you know, you think you're hitting whatever, you know, google.com's mm -hmm. homepage and you'll mm -hmm. see like all the cookie requests and all that stuff just flying over the wire. Uh, so it's definitely, uh, worth checking out the pie hole stuff and, uh, seeing, seeing what you can take out of your network that you just don't need. <laughs> That's right. You know, and then block all the uh, ad revenue for all those pesky YouTubers. <laughs> being sarcastic uh yes. let's see here cdnet wants to know your location yeah there oh, you go thanks, perfect what what a perfect segue to this next article do you want to subscribe to this newsletter no i don't oh there's another <laughs> ad. holy cow this is just yep thank you ZDNet. sounds like you need it we're we're sharing your content can you please not service 10 million ads <laughs> um Google expects its staff to work from home till 2021, and it's not alone. Yeah. Uh, it's not alone in the fact that we're doing that here at Progress as well. Maybe not 2021 yeah. officially on it, any capacity, but uh, we're definitely still evaluating the situation. What about you guys, right. John? Yeah, so Octopus Deploy has always been sort of, I hate the term, but remote first. Uh, so we we have quite a few people that work from home. We do have an office. It's in Brisbane, and some of us go to it maybe once or twice a week. Uh, we've stopped doing that, obviously. Um, but we've always worked from home. Uh, but this article goes into detail about how this is sort of the emerging trend, certainly amongst, amongst tech companies. Uh, Facebook also said that their employees probably won't return for quite a while. Um, and I, I suspect that we're going to see uh, a growing trend of people who work from home who actually enjoy it. I think I saw a uh, article recently that I think the numbers anywhere between 40 to 50 percent of people who are new to working remotely uh, really enjoy it and actually want to continue to work remotely when all these lockdown measures are lifted. So that's interesting. I think we're going to see a new world of work. Uh, certainly that is evidenced by the fact that you can't seem to buy a webcam anywhere. Um, green screens like this one I have here or streaming lights like the ones from Elgato, those are mm -hmm. sold out everywhere. Uh, it certainly seems like everyone's getting onto the remote work bandwagon, which is actually, I think, a good thing. Uh, cut down traffic. Suddenly you're going down the highway at 5 p.m. Hey, you know, traffic's a little light here. What's going on? You know, maybe everyone's working remotely. Um, I think it would be a good thing. And I think it will, like I said, I think the first time we started doing Code It Live, uh, sorry, Eat Sleep Cove, um, one of the remarks I made when uh, things started getting canceled back in February was we had pulled all our events, uh, sponsorships, because we were clearly not going to be on the road. And mm -hmm. we said, we said, like, look, we're, we basically said to our employees uh, early on, because I'm in charge of events, I was like, look, we, we can't be on the road here. People are going to get stuck in countries, et cetera. And it's not worth the risk. Um, but I kind of made the flippant observation that I think this is going to change change conferences for quite a long time. And certainly that seems to be the case. I know that uh, the uh, there are some conferences 
uh, or associations uh, somewhere in the world, I think it's England or someplace like that, that said they're probably not going to see in-person conferences probably till 2022. So the reality is we're all going to be working from home for quite a while. I don't think this is going to end anytime soon, certainly not until there's a vaccine. And even then, if there's a vaccine, it's going to take a while to distribute, you know, seven and a half yeah. billion people. It's going to take a while. Uh, so anyways, this is the new world of work. I think it's going to have a huge impact on how we do things going f- forward. Um, and you're seeing a lot of articles out there around how to work effectively as a remote worker, how to attend Skype calls or Zoom calls effectively, yada, yada, yada. So there's a lot of this sort of uh, this is the this is the sort of meme, if you will, uh, at the moment. Um, I am seeing some people who not personally, but just anecdotally, I'm hearing of some people who do struggle with this sort of way of working. And that's unfortunate because I actually have been doing it for quite a while and I actually enjoy it. But um yeah it's just interesting that uh you know this is kind of the trend that's going ahead so i've got a i've got a little fun story about just how bad the traffic can be when when i did have a commute i'm i'm work from home now uh have been for the last five years so this uh whole uh working from home stuff isn't so new to me is it just like it it's not to you uh but before that i had a job that i had to commute 30 minutes each direction um, to and from the office. And uh, we had also have a meetup group that meets in the same office building that I worked in. Mm-hmm. Um, and the meetup group gets out at like, you know, 930 at night. So one day I'm driving home, it's like 930, 10 o'clock. And it's a road that I drove, you know, every day for like nine years straight. And uh, all of a sudden I get pulled, pulled over by a police officer and uh he's he you know i roll down the window he's like uh do you know what the speed limit is in here and i was like yeah i've been driving this for like you know nine years do you know what the speed limit is <laughs> yeah i was like it's it's 60 miles an hour i'm like i don't have any clue why you pulled me over he's like no it's 45 and i was like no it's, oh. it's 60 i've been driving this forever i'm like it's 60 he's like no actually it's 45 so after i thought about it for a while what it is is every day at five o'clock i get out of work and I drive this length of uh, interstate, and it is 45 until a certain point. But I never noticed because there's so much traffic there that you're always going like 25, 30 miles an hour anyway. Right, right. And then after about 10, 15 miles, it opens up at and it's 60, 70 miles an hour. So I'm doing you know 60 in a 45, thinking. <laughs> this is the normal thing to do. And I, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm not arguing with the guy, but he's obviously right. And then, and I'm trying to prove a point where I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm like debating with him. Like, nah, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm talking about. I drive this every day, but, uh, I did drive it every day just at like 30 miles an hour. So he was right. I ended up paying that ticket. But, uh, yeah, I was good. I was, I was thinking that Leah, yeah, you can see the newscast later that night, local, uh, tech guy gets arrested <laughs> after arguing speed limit. <laughs> you see the clip like, ah, it's 45. No, it's 60. <laughs> I know my rights. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But anyway, it's a, it will alleviate some traffic. Um, it's unfortunate it had to happen this way. Uh, but I can imagine there's a lot of people that want to stay at home there's also probably quite a few that want to go back but it's going to be you know a different um different piece of the pie than it was um, right you know some some people didn't have any opportunity to even try it out before and then were forced to make that decision and now they don't want to go back and i can't say as i blame them um yep. this was like one of the worst stressful parts of my day like 35 minutes of dodging other cars and trying to like not die on the road so uh yeah it's i'm so happy to not have a commute now yep that's good so we've uh we've got uh oh geez zd net again yeah sorry (laughs) just i was getting lazy i I, these were on my to-do list but uh i just chose one source so we've got some good chatter in the in the chat room about uh their their various speeding tickets and uh opinions of what speed limits should be <laughs> sure it's good sure stuff good stuff it's keep def- it up guys speed limit speed limit should just say freedom right is that what do you guys think 
So yeah. there you go. <laughs> uh, we've, we've... So this is a news article that hit last week. Um, it, it, well, actually, this is an event that occurred in March, but basically um, a bunch of people said that they had they had basically uh, gained access to a small number of private repos within GitHub's organization on GitHub, obviously. Um, this, I mean, maybe not a big deal, but, um, you know, it is something that uh, obviously is of note. Uh, Microsoft has quite a bit of source code now published on GitHub. They are they com- they frequently refer to themselves as the largest organization on GitHub. So they like to tout that as you know, contributing to open source. And by the way, this is not, I'm not bringing this up to say, ha, look at Microsoft pointing fingers, all that sort of, that's not that at all. I'm just saying, FYI, this has happened. And I think it's a good notice to all of us because we all have accounts on GitHub. Just make sure you're, you've tightened up your security capabilities on, on GitHub, uh, participate in two-factor authentication, make sure that you're, you know, changing your passwords, use a password manager, like one mass, one, password or last pass um, generate your passwords make them super long etc etc do all the right things there because if it can happen to microsoft it can happen to you um, but incidentally i mean i don't think this i mean it's kind of hard to gauge sometimes how much of this was compromised because you know we went to microsoft for comment and then you know there's there's kind of like a lot of back and forth about how big it is is it a big thing is it not etc rafael rivera said that um you know, on Twitter that, you know, obviously it's a, it's a big deal because 500 gigs of source code is a lot, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's just one of those things you got to keep, keep on mind. And anytime I see these things, I just remind myself, make sure you're doing the right things. It can happen to you, et cetera, et cetera. Just to show you that it um, definitely can happen to anybody. Sure. Uh, this was also a headline, uh, from last, the last week or two. Uh, yeah, so, this is going to have a big impact on MAME generators. So the yeah, people, Nintendo like, source code yeah. leaked. Yeah. So, so for those who don't know, MAME is is like a, a it's a it stands for multi-purpose emulator um, a framework. It's for it's for basically uh, emulating uh, typically game consoles like Super Nintendo, etc. It allows you to run. Uh, old programs. And so what this was is, uh, there was a, if I remember this correctly, I saw this, there was a vendor that worked with Nintendo back in the day. And it wasn't Nintendo that I think lost the source code. It was a vendor. I think I I can't remember the story. You've got it here, obviously, but that's the story I remember. Yeah, I think, I think that's the same, uh, as well. Um, yeah, it says right here, hackers pulled tons of legacy code off of third-party servers. Party server. So they they weren't even after like main like uh, modern day IP, but they you know Nintendo's got you know all the Mario legacy stuff and right, right. all sorts of things that are just generational um, IP that you know people they they keep going to that well and people enjoy those you know characters and things and now they've got all of those old games in the wild and other uh wii information as well so some user profile information got leaked there's a ton of stuff it was several terabytes so i mean it's it's quite a bit of data and again i'll reiterate this is not to basically point and laugh this is more of just just remember this can happen to you so be careful make sure you do the right thing don't be don't be uh thinking that this can't happen to you it can uh, two-factor authentication, folks. It's pretty easy to turn on. Yeah, It'll save you a lot of headaches. Yeah. Definitely would recommend it. So I, I like the, I like this link. Um, <laughs> you know, sorry, we, I had to. We now, have the these office, debates. Now there are uh, things that you should make fun of, but there are definitely things you should, and this is definitely one of the things you should make fun of. We've been having debates around the uh, team here about what. Uh, what type of hardware we should buy. And I am totally in favor of folks having their Macs. Uh, if they were getting the wrong idea, please, uh, I want you to have your Macs. I, I like the fact that we have technical diversity and we're able to talk about... All right, all right, about, all right. Now, like, now uh, go into it. Yeah. Like uh, Visual <laughs> Studio code for Mac and we have, you know, the different, you know, we can understand our different customer bases. All right, Ed, we got it, we got it, we got the it. political Ed, Ed. part over, this is ridiculous. <laughs> $600... No, seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Yeah, you heard that right. If you're $700. listening, you're not watching. 
wheels, wheels like casters yeah. for your Mac. Yeah. For your Mac. So the Pro. Mac, the Mac Pro, the Mac Pro is a beautiful machine. Um, some people say it looks like a cheese grater, uh, but you know I like it. Uh, it's more than capable, super powerful, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now the thing about the Mac is that it's got this sort of capability at the bottom where you can mount stuff. It look when people saw it initially, they're like, oh, that's interesting. Um, but what they've done is they've given you the ability, despite the fact that you'll have this thing wired to something, to your chain, if you will, to uh, a power plug. Uh, they've given you the ability to roll it around on wheels and the wheels themselves are $700. And as Ed has done the math here, uh, $175 US per wheel. So, yeah. yeah I don't think there's much really to be said here. I mean, this is ridiculous. Each wheel is 175 yes. Dude, I don't think the wheels for my first car cost that much. <laughs> These are these are expensive, as expensive as tires you get for your car. So the tires, <laughs> the amount of rubber that you, because they cost about eight hundred bucks, I think, um, Australian for me to change out the four. They usually get one tire free as well. Why didn't Apple offer one tire? Huh? Come on, Apple, get with the get with the tire program, right? So buy three, get one for free. Um, yeah, what happens? You don't want to buy. The, you can't buy these individually. What if one breaks? Come on, Apple. Um, what if you get a flat? Yeah. <laughs> Do they yeah, come with roadside right. assistance? <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, sorry. The jokes are endless, right? They're, they're actually pretty bad. Uh... Um, and as St. Border rightly points out, these come with summer or winter tires. So, yeah, uh, I think we, I think we've, I think we've exhausted the tire puns. The, so, these puns anyway. are tiring. Yes. Oh, geez. All right. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, this is this is ridiculous. Of all the things that Apple, they're a little flat. Sell, I'm sorry. This is Ed. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is ridiculous. Uh, this is totally ridiculous. Yeah, you know, it, it's it goes with the territory, man. Um, Mac puts out some good hardware. I'm not going to deny it. Um, I, I did a little little cost comparison on some of the hardware that they have out, and if you factor in the their price of a monitor, yes, like the, yes. the actual like Mac Pros, the the iMacs aren't that badly priced. So they're like uh, my my new machine was uh, around three grand. Similar hardware in the Mac realm runs about five, uh, oh. but I also didn't buy a monitor. And theirs comes with like a 5K 27 inch uh, uh, yes. Retina display. So I mean, if you if you can, in your gut, say that's worth two thousand dollars to you, then the hardware about shakes out. Uh, so it's not too absurd. But then the accessories start coming in, and then you have <sighs> seven hundred dollar wheels for your. I. I, I like to think that I have some control over my own finances, but the reality is my wife makes those decisions and I can't see myself trying to justify this to her. Huh? Two for you, two for me, right? You know, we both share. <laughs> and they'd be like, no, we're not doing that. So instead... Yeah, I, don't, I don't know why you wouldn't just do this. Exactly. You could buy this dolly that is made out of wood <laughs> and has four four wheels already attached. Um <laughs> And the entire contraption comes at the price of fifty-seven dollars. <laughs> or is, is that right? I love Am it. I reading that right? I think so. I yeah. Think so. Supports a seven and a half inch. Yep. Uh, seven eighths inch. That's anyway. that's so funny. That's yeah. classic. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't have the aesthetic appeal. I mean, here's no. one. Here's one for thirty-six. <laughs> <laughs> the Apple, Apple logo on it. Yeah, just slap an Apple sticker on it, and then you're good to go. I mean, 600 pound capacity. There you go. 600 pounds. So yeah, you uh, put two, you could put two of the Mac Pros on them. You know? So it will hold the Mac and all the hype. And you <laughs> holding it above your head as you wonder where did all my money go? I w I want more more puns. I mean, yeah, yeah, these, it just writes itself. These puns are are wheel great. <laughs> well, actually, the, the I think the, the best reaction to this was the YouTube video that I also included. Uh, this this guy decided to shoot a video of himself. We can't show it to you, obviously, for copyright, or maybe Ed can. Um, but if you go online and search for, uh, oh, you go on YouTube's. Um, oh yeah, we know the monitor stand as well. Ed's bringing up a picture of the monitor stand. Um, 
$900, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but if you go on YouTube, you can do a search for, uh, I think, Apple Reaction Wheels, things like that. And it's literally a guy spending 10 minutes staring at the box and the wheels and kind of asking himself, what is the deal with these things? So, Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm not even going to read this one out loud. No. You can see for yourself how ridiculous this is. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay. Um. Yeah. yeah. There's. Anyways. There's a tons of memes. We'll just say that. Yep. Oh. Yep. Good stuff. Always there, good stuff. I bet there's some good meme images. I should probably I'd be careful. Uh, image I'd search be careful live, here. Yeah. Live I'd be ca- live yeah, Don't image search. Yep. I'm sure there's fun stuff out there. <laughs> All good things. Awesome. Uh, God bless Apple. You know the fact that they have you know, the guts to do something like this. I'd rather, I'd, I'd prefer to use a different adjective than that, but they have the guts to do something like this. Um, yeah. You know, God bless them. If they can, if they can make it work, God bless them. You know, people are dumb enough to buy this, then God bless them, you know? So. Uh, these jokes write themselves. <laughs> I mean, uh, we'll, we'll say face and not, not continue, but uh, <laughs> this is great, man. Anytime I just the last one. I just I've just envisioned like people wheeling in their Macs into the Apple Store, and they got these genius. The, the, the that's the one thing that I've always bugged me. The the Mac, the Apple geniuses, um, they're all up on these like the on these what do they call those those elevator things that you see in in car garages? You know, just have all these Macs, and people are underneath them. You know, sort of thing. Uh, Anyways, that's <laughs> the same. lift. Sorry. Yeah, the lifts. Thank you. All right, I think we've done this to death. Yeah. We we have, uh, we we've gone a full 360 on these puns <laughs> come, on. come on ed come on uh it's uh it's fun that you know it if you took apple out of the equation this would still be ridiculous and funny so i don't care who you are like don't yep. charge 700 dollars for some casters that cost you 35 cents a piece um th- there's no like there's no efficiency that you could tell me that makes a caster for any device, I don't care if it's a computer or otherwise, worth seven hundred dollars. Like, there's just not. They could be the quietest. Yeah, I, I don't care. Like, <laughs> they how often come do you with move, something else. How often do you move a desktop PC as well? Like, are you, like, how busy is your office that you're constantly wheeling it around? Like, yeah, I don't know who these people are that need these things, but it's like, I mean, I could see it if you're on a movie set and you're having to like go from scene to scene but who are these people that need wheels on their desktop pc i don't get it anyways that's the last turning into a seinfeld bit now who are these people what's the deal what's the deal with with these wheels (laughs) (laughs) can you get like spinners for them like yeah probably yeah i get rim get nice rims rims where you know bling them up and all that so yeah perfect that'd be great no it wouldn't if if they want to go into (laughs) accessories i mean that's where yeah. the real money's at. Yes, Rims. exactly. Well, Apple, God bless Apple. They know what they're doing. I mean, I've got any number of dongles uh, for my MacBook Pro. And they knew jumping the Thunderbolt slash USB-C has been a cash cow for Apple. I mean, I've had to rebuy all the dongles for HDMI, for VGA, for whatever it may be, right? Uh, even Ethernet, right? Um, so, you know, you know, more power to them. They could have tapped into a whole new market here and been like, you know, like GTA where you go in and like customize your car <laughs> and sold like different color variations. Where's the right. ro- rose gold $700 yeah, exactly. rims for my Apple yep. Pro wheels? Yep. Yeah, you got to take it to the nth extreme. You got to have the uh, the lights. You got to have everything, right? Oh, yeah. I've got lights on mine. Don't don't shame the lights now. All right, cool. Yeah, my, my, uh, my new rig... Uh, uh, let's see if I can if I can get the snapshot I took this morning. We were doing a little a little share this morning. Let me see if I Dude, can. Dude, we get are it. so far away from tech now. It's not even funny. Oh yeah, this is totally tech. It's uh <laughs> this this is the ridiculous world that we live in. This is this is the new the new get up here, man. So you got to have the monolithic black box that uh, oh. looks like uh what's that what's that movie? Uh Space Odyssey. Uh I was going to say something like Blade Runner. You know, you've got like the the light like jetting out of the sides. I mean, come on, that's that's awesome right there. You you have mm-hmm. to have that makes it faster. 
Yeah, I think it just makes it more head more of a headache to put together. I assembled a PC recently, and I my it was for my son, and he was like, "Can we get RGB?" And I'm like, eh, "I don't want to do it. I I just sticking it to the case is like probably like even getting the wires set up correctly is hard enough. Now you got to put lights in it. Ugh, no thanks. So, um, I, I feel like it's missing something though. I mean, look at it; it's a really nice machine, but. It's just kind of lacking something. I just can't put my finger on it. Um, Seven hundred dollar wheels. I think that's yeah. That's, that's right. Going there you go. That yeah, I could use wheels. Wheels on a carpet, even better. Yeah. Oh man, the uh, the light feature, uh, while cool and adjustable, um, it does have uh, this handy little app that it comes with. Dude, okay, so I'm just going to say RGB is the clapper of PCs. So do you remember the clapper Thank from God, the I thought 80s? you were going with a different analogy for a second. No, no, no. Do no, you um, remember the clap on, clap off, the clapper? <laughs> the, this yeah. is RGB, I'm convinced, is the clapper of PC builds. I, I really don't get why PP want, people want lights in them because you stare. For, they look cool for five minutes, and then you kind of turn them off after a while because they're annoying, but that's me. Sorry, I'm just an old man. Um, yeah, so I've built many of these with the uh, lights before the light systems were cool. And um, t now it doesn't matter if I was still, uh, oh, wow. you know, doing doing this type of stuff on the regular. Ugh. It might matter, but uh, I just want it to run so good. <laughs> but it just so happens that this came with this feature and, uh, you know, I'll play with it. I don't mind it being there. I mean, who wow. doesn't want a marquee scrolling set of rainbow light colors? Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah, this thing is stuck underneath your desk. No one can see it. And you got it doing all these fancy things. Great. <laughs> I hope it was worth it. <laughs> what I need to do is uh, bring it on the plane with me. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, like that whole argument we had earlier yeah. about bringing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I can, uh, I can play my games. Like I'll rent the extra middle seat. That's supposed to be wow. there for social distancing now. Wow. wow. I'll just plop you're my just, rig in there. Ed, you're just getting me angry, man. You don't want me angry. Come on. <laughs> I hate it... all this. I hate it. Just let computers be simple. I, I loved the beige, <laughs> the beige pizza boxes we had back in the 90s. They were great. The turbo button. Bring no, back the turbo weren't. button. That's what I want. This has so right? this is the this is the, the new lighting, turbo button. Even if the turbo button, even if the turbo button doesn't do anything, like the RGB lights, just give me it. All right. I want something to press that goes from 33 to the 66. This is the new turbo button, my friend. <laughs> this is right. like it makes it go. It makes it look faster. It's like spoilers on a Civic. Yep. You, yep. <laughs> there's like I don't know how many people I just offended in the chat room. Like, hey, I've got spoilers on my on my Civic. Leave me alone. Yep. 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 Um, sorry if uh, Hang you on, have I'm gonna spoilers floor it. on your <laughs> on your Honda, but. Um, Yep. Yeah, this is this is the new turbo button. Uh, yep. I thought this fad would play out like, I mean, it's been tens of years since I've built a PC with these lights in it. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I mean, they're they're more on desks, but I think just people get. I mean, I've seen my son play with his PC on his desk and stuff, and he barely looks at it anymore. And we didn't put any RGB in there, but there are built-in ones for just general lights. Like I think there's a couple on the motherboard, and he doesn't care anymore. And We've actually put it on the floor. Um, so I think this is kind of like a waste of money, but that's me. So. Yeah. I, I don't think I paid anything extra really for this, but okay. um, uh, it, like I said, it's not, not one of the selling features. Uh, the guts that are in it were the selling features. It just so happened to come with this. Um, the only legitimate use I can see for this, and, and that I, term I use very vaguely, but I've seen some streamers that use their their, their uh, PCs as a showpiece, uh, you know, game yeah, streamers yeah, especially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when they're playing, um, let's see, this one, let's see, do I still have the, I think I closed the image out. Um, mm. It changes based on events that occur, I guess? Uh, not so much that. It's just a, uh, it's got this big glass panel on the side. And I've seen... Um, 
I've seen streamers use this type of thing in their background, and they must have right. some serious cables coming out of here, routing it to their desk so they can use it mm, with mm. them behind them. But it's off camera or on camera behind their head, like in yeah. the background. Uh, if they're gaming, sometimes they'll have uh, their uh, sponsors like tattooed across the side of this thing. Yeah, I, I prefer a separation concerns. Why not just get some Philips Hue light bulbs or something like that? Like, I, I don't get why people decide to shove it. Like, this is probably the most tightly constrained area you're going to have in your entire house, right? Like, this is this is more packly tight than, say, your herb um, section of your kitchen, right? And you're trying to squeeze lights in there for whatever reason i don't get it you know but whatever the same reason so. people do this right it's no one's putting lights in their engine yeah no one puts lights in their engine yeah they do let's just be clear yes no, they, they do. don't oh but no, they don't do you want me to google that it'll take five seconds here i'll do it off screen for safety no, no yeah do it off screen yeah i was just gonna say who puts leds underneath the hood of their car oh and again you're speaking me. to a guy who who is driving the equivalent of like a walker in terms of horsepower for my car. Wow. Wow. Okay. Did you really want to challenge I, me on that? Yeah, I, I guess I was wrong. Sorry. Jeez. I mean, every once in a while, I want to check the sanity of this planet and uh, I know the results are not going to be happy. I mean, it looks cool, but once a thing is covered in garbage, like all the road dirt and grease and oil i mean is it still going to look like that uh these are potentially cars you wouldn't drive i'd imagine okay um that's good you know that's if you're nice. if you've got a showpiece like these you probably would uh if you're going to take it long distance you're probably going to have it hauled there and then you may drive it in the local vicinities but uh yeah people yeah, that have I show just, cars generally don't drive them this is just such a waste of money just put this in uh, stocks. Put this in something that's going to grow. This is just uh, such a colossal waste you, of money. Anyways, it, sorry. It is. I mean, look. I'm just bring, I'm bringing the fun is, down on this show. Come on. <laughs> no, you're totally right. It's $377 for illuminated polished cover for your car engine. Invest that into an SPS. Totally, you could have totally yeah, put spent that, that an, money on wheels for your Mac. Put, better yet, put that into an index fund. And over 20 years, I bet you have double your money at least. At least, you know. <laughs> You're not going to let me go back to the wheels on the Mac, are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could sense you totally just uh, ignoring my statement there. <sighs> this this is money. This is. Look, I blame this myself. Is, I blame myself. I was the one who brought this up. You opened the scan of worms, my friend. The, this is. I'm going to go back. I'm circling back right now. This is. This is half of the. <laughs> this is two yes, wheels. Yes, I know. Half, half, yeah. This gets you two Apple uh, Mac Pro wheels. Perfect. So here's the trade-off: you can have four Mac wheels, or you can have a red cover for when you're sporting the red, and a blue cover for when right. you're sporting the blue. That's great. That's great. Good. You can match your outfit Perfect. to your car's internal that looks pretty, hood colors. That looks colors. pretty badass. That that looks pretty good. <laughs> I don't know what good. I'm I looking mean, at. I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm not. I'm not. We've lost we've lost touch with cars these days. I mean, I don't know what I'm looking at when I open up the hood of my car now because it's like a it's like a PC basically. You know, all these cars you can't even tell you can't tell what you're looking at now when you look at cars because they're all they're all just put together in a black box. And uh, yeah, this is great. You know, let's light it up. Perfect. Oh, did you catch oh, look, the did you catch the look, hood they, there? They, yeah, yeah, they put transparent hoods on them now. Great, perfect. Well, that one's got a. That's not transparent. That's a mirror. It's got a mirror on the uh, top side of the, uh, the underside. Yeah, so it looks like a PC. Flip the hood. It reflects. Yeah, it looks like a PC. This is great. Perfect. Just what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing we'll we'll notice with uh, the current this is situation. So stupid. This is so stupid. All of this is so stupid. It's frivolous garbage that we spend money <laughs> on. Um, <laughs> illuminated. Uh, engine covers and parts that you're never going to look at. Perfect um, NPCs. We've yeah. come full circle. Perfect. Love yeah, it. I think all of that stuff. Uh, we've shed a new light on it with the current crisis. Like <sighs> none of this crap is important when. Uh, no, none of it is. None of it is. It all yeah, sucks. When you need medical supplies and food. Exactly. Nobody cares how shiny the inside of your car engine is. 
yeah, I, I, I would totally agree with that. I think we've got better things to spend our money on. Yeah. Uh, I think we've we've definitely exhausted the content for the show. Sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. I no, lost half of our I know you're Canadian. You have to say sorry, but you, don't be sorry. Sure, it was, it was sure. good stuff. <laughs> uh, it was fun. Um, I think everybody needs a little, little bit of fun these times. Uh, so it, it was a lot of fun, and we will do it again next week. Uh, same, same uh, Mac wheel time. Same Mac wheel channel. And uh, <laughs> you'll know better than to bring me links that I can I can rant yeah. about for a great. Long that's great. We spent we spent most of the show talking about Apple uh, wheels. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. Uh, I, I've got to get me some of those. I do. <laughs> Maybe those will be you know when events come back. Dude, circ- it's this done. is the it's third done. time I've circled back now. I'm gonna keep doing this until people <laughs> leave. Um, when events come back in the session, like we have conferences again, Sarah, if you're still listening, if you haven't, if you haven't quit your job yet, um, if when we go back to uh, events again, this totally has to be a booth raffle item. <laughs> we have to, we'll be the the booth that, that's giving away the Mac wheels for seven. Just give away, okay. Just give away, no, just give away one. So your PC is like like that, you know. Just give away one. Be a scavenger hunt. We'll place the four Mac wheels throughout the venue. All right, uh, all right we're done. We're done, dude. We're done. Jeez. <laughs> all right. Let's. Um, I don't know if we can find a raid to go raid someone, but we will give it a try. Um, don't give me too much time. I'll. I'll. I'll find another way to s- take a stab at these wheels. Um, we have got. Uh, We've got Kevin Griffin and um, let's see who else is uh, up here. Let's go ahead and raid Kevin Griffin. He's a good friend here. He's uh, somebody that we've done some events and stuff with. Perfect. Let me see if I can find his uh, his screen name. Okay. There we go. We'll go say hi to Kevin Griffin. Um, so give him a shout out from uh, from Ed and John at the uh, Code It Live channel. He probably know who, who sent him over. Um, we've got 15 folks queuing up here. And I can hear the sound bleeding in as well. Let me kill that. Anybody who is subscribed can go flip that sample into a beat and then. Good old Twitch. All right, there we go. We're raiding, and 15 of us are headed over to Kevin Griffin's channel. Say hello. Uh, come back tomorrow for or Wednesday. I don't know if we have anything tomorrow. Wednesday, uh, TJ Vantel and I will be looking at how to build NPM packages that you can distribute on NPM. Uh, learn how to do that kind of from scratch. And uh, we will talk to you all soon. Uh, so if you haven't followed, give us a follow so you get alerts when the show goes live. Uh, say hi to Kevin for us. Bye-bye.